Fair to see politicians uh, speak almost in uh, the same tone, but that's finally what seems to be happening for the GST. Well, so what next for the market and how should we look at tomorrow's trading action given all these cues? Mayuresh Joshi from Angel Broking joins in. Mayuresh, good to have you on the show. So, you know, you have uh, the, the twin factors. We just saw how badly global markets are shaping up right now. And then it's also the big GST day tomorrow. What should we be prepared for? Be prepared for. Evening, Surabhi. So yes, I think the markets have largely been expecting that the GST will go through in the monsoon session and the reality has come tomorrow. Though I think uh, going forward, the rate at which GST comes through will be keenly watched out for. And again, I think the market uh, will come to the facts that it's a long drawn out process. The GST rollout will happen on the 1st of April 2017 and it will take out phases in terms of full implementation across sectors. Having said that, probably in the interim, global queues probably will act as a tampener, but liquidity flows are continuing to be extremely strong and robust. So all these factors are probably offsetting each other in a certain manner. But the real trust would be, I think, uh, how the corporate earnings will grow and the expectations largely is that the corporate earnings will start growing. By Q3, you've seen a mix pack coming through in this quarter. But largely, I think the re-rating of the markets will happen once the CAPEX and the corporate earnings pick up in the second half. Till that point of time, I think once the GST is cleared, if it is cleared tomorrow, I think positively sentimental for the markets. The markets might move up along with the liquidity guys that we are witnessing but largely it goes on to see after a few weeks uh, how the markets will react uh, to global queues and going forward how earnings will pan out. So Mayuresh what are your GST picks if any and though a lot of this is already known I mean there's nothing new but would you expect let's say a knee-jerk negative reaction on the likes of, of an ITC or maybe a United Spirits? My fund really goes with the presumption that the tax would be anywhere between 17 and 18 percent. A few of these uh, sectors under the Arvind Subramaniam report, the SIN tax as we call it, probably is uh, expected to be in uh, around that 40 percent kind of range. If that actually comes through, obviously yes, I think the direct incidence of uh, effective tax rates going up for cigarette manufacturers, liquor manufacturers, branded apparels, uh, luxury cars, I think goes up significantly. So on the negative side of things, I think even the telecom sector to a certain extent, I think the effective tax rate goes up uh, for them. And again, if you look at specific pharma companies uh, who, are, who are probably moving around in the domestic sphere, I think there I think the margin uh, compression can be evident. So I think a few sectors might get negatively impacted, but one really has gone under the presumption of a 17-18% rate. And again, I think the rates mentioned in the Arvind Subramanian report. But I think it's over a period of time that we'll come to know what kind of rates are actually subsumed under the GST. All right, we'll take a quick break on that note. On the other side, lots of important earnings action to go over as well. All eyes on HCL Tech tomorrow, along with that, a touch of consumer plays, including Titan and Butter. Welcome back here with Markets Forward. Some very interesting earnings movers today. In fact, the three stocks that really stood out would be Interglobe Aviation down 11%. Then, of course, there was Voltas, which everybody on the street had their eye on. And last but not the least, Indian Bank was the big, big surprise. That stock zooming away. In fact, we're talking about a gain of 20% and up circuit on that stock, largely because asset quality was stable. So those are the three big movers of the day. In fact, we did catch up with the Indian Bank management to try and understand if the worst of the asset quality pain is behind uh, we told last time also that as far as our cleaning our balance sheet is concerned the majority of the cleanup we had done in q3 and q4 of the last financial year and uh, now for us there are not uh, major pains as far as slippages are concerned even within this 825 crore of slippages during this quarter itself 93 crore slippages were in the existing NP accounts addition and remaining out of 700 crore, 60% is less than 1 crore exposure, which is mainly agri education loan and MSME. And remaining 40% is a large ticket exposure. So for us, there are not uh, major worries as far as slippages are concerned. Mayuresh, what did you think? I mean, this is, the, I, I don't remember the last time we saw 20% circuit on a mid-cap PSU bank and I'm talk, not talking about the SBI associates and subsidiaries. But really, I mean, the fall on Interglobe today, the moves that we saw on Voltas, etc., uh, what really stands out for you? 
No, again, I think largely the streets would be was expecting a good set of numbers to come through from Volters. Uh, and as I was expecting, the UCPs did stand up uh, for Volters. Uh, the EMP segment, again, I think a large part of the legacy orders are out of the way. And if one really assumes uh, the kind of contracts that can come their way with the Qatar and Dubai Expo expected over the next few years, the international books also looks in good stead. Again, traditionally a very strong quarter for Volters. It's able to maintain its market share, whether they've been able to do that in this quarter, I think the transcript will be able to tell us. But largely, I think expecting good set of earnings probably to continue I think a few quarters I think they might have some seasonality impact but largely over the next two years I think we are still expecting a good top line and bottom line growth when it comes to Interglobe I think uh, they did face competitive pressures the A320 Neo slow induction did impact uh, the margins on an overall basis and though passenger volume growth did come through I think it came at the cost of margins again Indian banks tell a performance uh, will be but again I think whether they'll be able to repeat this quarter after quarter I think is, is to be seen but if one goes by the operating performance that they've uh, uh, thrown out. I think it, it, it has been a stellar show by Indian Bank uh, in this quarter. Okay, tomorrow it's going to be all about HCL Bank and a clutch of really important consumer companies. So let's start off with HCL Tech. Rima runs us through the expectations. Last of the big IT companies to come out with their earnings. For HCL Technology, we are expecting a good quarter. So a dollar revenue growth of close to about 55 to 6%. But this will be aided by the acquisition of the external business of Volvo. Uh, and that could contribute close to about 3 odd percent. So on an organic basis, growth will be about 3% for HCL Technology. The street would like to see a strong performance because for the last three quarters at least, the performance has been a bit disappointing. With respect to margins, our poll throws margins to contribute tracked by a little more than 100 basis points, 19.5 percent on the margins. Uh, the big reason is on account of the lower margin profile of Volvo, uh, the business that they've acquired which will contribute to the revenues as well as the transition costs. And also in the prior quarter there were some you know provisions which had been reversed so the base effect also kicks in. Um, you know the management in the past at least in the last quarter had stopped giving us the margin guidance ban so the street is a bit concerned on that but I think the two key things that we'll want to watch very closely one, of course, is on the margin trajectory and secondly, on the growth, because if you see the constant currency revenue growth for HCL technology has been slowing down um, and some pickup in growth will be keenly watched. All right, Rima, thanks so much for that. Now, a clutch of consumer companies are also all set to report numbers tomorrow. And we have the likes of uh, Bata, Imami and also Berger Paints. Manglam joins in with the consolidated list of expectations. Three mid-cap consumer companies reporting their numbers tomorrow. I will start with Berger Paints. The stock has surged nearly 47% since budget day lows. A good quarter is expected because Asian Paints as well as Kansai Nerolac too posted a decent set of numbers. Channel checks indicate that Berger Paints has also gained some market share in this quarter. Our poll throws up a top-line growth of 10%, EBITDA margin increase of nearly 130 basis points, around that 14.5% mark and a net profit growth of 32%. The two key factors to watch, one, will be gross margins which are seen higher by about 250 to 270 basis points and secondly volume growth is expected to be in the low double digits around that 10 to 12 percent mark. The second stock I'll be watching out for is Bata reporting the first quarter numbers and seasonally the first quarter is strong. The stock remember has surged about 30 percent since budget day lows and the, so the first quarter is strong primarily because the school shoes uh, sell well at the same time the company did advance the end of season sales so that is likely to give a boost to the revenues. Our poll throws up a revenue growth of about 11% with margins around that 13.5% mark. Net profit is likely to be around that 60 crore mark which compares to 92 crores in the base quarter and looks optically lower on the net profit because the base quarter had an exceptional gain of 43 crore on account of some receipts coming in from property development projects. The third company I'm watching out for is Imami. Most of the gains are likely to be led by Cash King acquisition. Our poll throws up a revenue growth of almost 19% around that 700 crore mark. But remember, optically, the numbers may look lower for all the companies on account of India exchanges. Margins are likely to be around that 20% mark for Imami led by higher gross margins. As far as the net profit is concerned, the street has a wide range of estimates right from about 29.9 crore to 216 crore primarily on account of different expectations of amortization for the case being acquisition. I remember the company had raised 950 crore worth debt 
to uh, fund this acquisition last June around 1600 odd crores worth acquisition. So that would also mean the finance cost is likely to be higher because of which the net profit will be lower. Cash King is the one which will lead revenue growth anywhere between 68 to 75 crore worth revenue is seen coming in from Cash King. Keep an eye out on Imami too. All right, that's an exhaustive list, Manglam. Thanks for that. And of course, it's also the turn of watches and jewellery maker Titan to report numbers. Naveen joins in with what to expect. Well, two things to watch out of the results of Titan that are coming out tomorrow. The first one being the revenue growth in the jewellery segment. Remember, jewellery segment accounts for almost 78% of the total revenues. We expect the jewellery segment revenues to grow anywhere around 18-20%. to 20%. The, uh, This addition will be uh, because of the redemption in the gold harvest scheme. Remember, the redemption in the gold harvest scheme will be accounted in the sales. So, that will be aiding to the overall sales. Also, one more thing that needs to be looked out for is the lower base, uh, which was there in quarter 1 of FI. 16. The second thing which needs to be watch out for is the margin growth. We expect a margin growth overall growth of around 100 basis points. This is because of the increase in price in the uh, of uh, gold and also because of a better operating leverage. So these two things will together help uh, the net profit grow by almost 22 percent uh, to settle at around 184 crores. Also uh, our poll suggests that the revenue will grow by around 15 percent uh, to settle at around 3100 uh, 3, crore. Back to you. All right, Naveen, many thanks for that. And before we wrap up this edition of Markets Forward, important to see just how deep the cuts are getting in global markets. Most of Europe has sold off around 2%. Wall Street is down by about 1% thereabouts. Uh, we have with us, I believe, uh, um, a market expert, Bruno Verstrat, jo joining in, partner Lakefield Partners. He's uh, joining in from Zurich. Bruno, thanks for being with us. It's after quite a bit of a gap that we're seeing this kind of risk aversion play out. What is happening out there? Yes, good afternoon. Well, I believe it's a bit of uh, profit-taking, together with a bit of disappointment from the uh, the Japanese QE, uh, which underwhelmed the investors quite a bit, um, and also the fact that the um, uh, consumers in the U.S. have not spent as much as, uh, as they thought they would. So I think it's a bit of profit-taking, uh, nothing to be worried about too much. But as soon as that happens, uh, a lot of fundamental reasons are sought for, such as the um, the problems at the Italian banks, all of these uh, lingering problems are surfacing immediately uh, at that stage. But I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Results are quite okay, and I believe this is just a bit of profit-taking so far. Okay, well, Bruno, we'll, we'll leave it on that note then, since you think it's probably just a bit of routine profit-taking and nothing more. Well, that's what bulls around the world would really hope for. With that, we're completely out of time. Thank you so much for being with us on this edition of the show.